Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Martin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Hi, everybody. You know, I really only have one drink a day. This one is for July 23rd, 1997. <laughs> Hey, we got a great show for you tonight. There's some really wonderful, talented stars lined up backstage. They're all waiting to go into the restroom. <laughs> but seriously, folks, we do, we do have some great guests tonight, and I can hardly wait to find out who they are. Well, I gotta go get ready for the first sketch. Point the Italian where you want it. Officer no thanks, Mrs. Lane. You know, coffee keeps you awake at night. That's right. Hey, Gus, let's take a thermos along on our honeymoon, huh? Good idea. At our age, we need all the help we can get. Here is a special announcement. Scientists at the Mount Wilson Observatory have just reported that a giant asteroid is about to collide with the planet Earth. They say that the world will come to an end in exactly five minutes. The world is coming to an end in five minutes? I can't believe it! Hey, I better get back to the station. How much do I owe you? 65 cents. Uh, I'll pay you tomorrow. <laughs> the end of the world! This is horrible! Why doesn't President Nixon do something? Don't worry. I'm sure Henry Kissinger's negotiating with the Almighty already. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jack Benny. I'm supposed to meet Dean Martin here. Mr. Benny, did what? you hear the news? What news? The world is coming to an end in five minutes. <laughs> Operator, look at I wonder if you can help me. The world is coming to an end in five minutes. Now, I just put a dime in a parking meter. <laughs> it's for an hour's parking. Uh, who do I call for a refund? The same to you. Hi, everybody. Dean, did you hear? We're about to collide with a heavenly body. No kidding. <laughs> well, see if she's got a sister for me. Dean, don't you understand? The world is coming to an end. In five minutes, it'll be all over for us. Oh, shucks, why do the good ones always die young? <laughs> what are you complaining about? I'll never see 40. <laughs> Time is running out, Dean. Think carefully. What do you want to do the last few moments on Earth? I know what. I just don't know who. <laughs> no, Dean, what I mean is it's too late to go to church. Would you like to telephone a priest and confess? Don't do it, Dean. He'll think it's an obscene phone call. <laughs> you know what I think we ought to do? I think we all ought to sit down and confess to each other. And we all ought to be as honest as we possibly can be. That's a wonderful idea. Come on. Mrs. Lane. Yes? Why don't you, you start? Huh? You start. All right. Mr. Kapopoulos, I have something terrible to confess to you about my figure. I'm not as well endowed as I may appear. I wear synthetic beauty aids. You mean you were going to marry me under falsy pretenses? That's about the size of it. Okay, now uh, my turn to confess my sins. Two minutes and ten commandments. He'll never make it. <laughs> what do you want to confess? Well, you know how my television show, I'm always talking about how much I drink. It's not true. It's just an image that's been created for me. In fact, I've only been drunk once in my entire life. When was that? 1938 to 1972. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now it's my turn. Now, there's something I've been wanting to get off my chest for a long time. You wear them, too. <laughs> Not in years. <laughs> no, I'm talking about something else. Dean, this may come as a great shock to you. I know you're not gonna believe this, but I'm cheap. <laughs> no. It's true, Dean. I'm stingy. Do you know that once, rather than pay a dime to get into the men's room, I decided to wait until I got home? That's not so bad. Oh, no. I was in Portugal at the time. <laughs> And there's something even worse I want to confess. You know how I've always claimed to be 39 years old? Well, I'm not 39. No? No, I am actually... Hey, did you hear? The world isn't really coming to an end after all. The whole thing was just a hoax by some disc jockey. 38. <laughs> The Dean Martin Show, starring Jack Benny, Lynn Anderson, Kay Metford, Lou Jacoby, Tom DeLuise, Rodney Dangerfield, Nipsey Russell, and the Dingaling Sisters. All right, my friend, there you go. Thank you, there you are, Don. Oh, and thank you, mm -hmm. too generous. Oh, well, let me hold it, hold it. Your hair yeah. is a little flat on your head. Would you like me to make it stand on a yeah. little higher? Yeah, would you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Oh, God. <laughs> Say, is he always like that? <laughs> well, that's my partner, the Mafia Madcap. <laughs> you mean... You two are partners? Yeah. I thought he owned the shop. Oh, no. He doesn't own the shop. We own the shop. We're four partners, 50-50. Isn't that wonderful? Gee, I'm so glad to hear that. Well, I'm very pleased that you feel that way about it. I'm glad to see that you're concerned about equal rights. What equal rights? If you're an owner, I don't have to tip you. Oh. <laughs> I think we just went from Reverend Abernathy to Archie Bunker. <laughs> Look, not tipping the owner happens to be the custom. Isn't that right, Don? Well, now, Jack, please, I don't want to get involved in a discussion on tipping. Uh, I believe that that is between you and your conscience. If you don't want to tip Nipsey because he's the owner, that's your privilege. I would never say one word to influence you. Just one suggestion. What? Don't let him shave you. <laughs> <laughs> This guy who didn't tip him walked out of here looking like Vincent Van Gogh. Oh. <laughs> you know, you did nick me here on the sideburns a little bit. Oh, I don't see any blood. Well, with me, it doesn't come out for about three days. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what it says here in the paper? There's some guy is suing the school board. He's very upset, challenging the school board right here. No, I didn't see it. What's that? Well, his kid is in high school, and he's very upset because they're teaching him sex education. Father's very upset. Oh, he wants his kid out of the class. No, he wants to get in the class. Oh, dear. <laughs> you know, you know something, fellas? What's that? What's that, Jack? I say what's right is right. Owner or not, Nipsey, you'll get your tip. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jack, who is talking about that? Jack, I know you got short arms and low pockets, but could you make it silver this time? I'm tired of hunting for those brown coins in this brown hand. What are, what are you complaining about? Lincoln's your man. <laughs> Uh, hi, Jack. Ah, hey, hi. I see you brought it with you this time. It's my own hair. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Dean, would Dean, you like me Dean, to uh, down? Would hmm? you like me? Would you like me to make your hair stand up? Okay. Can't shut. Oh, it's too much. 
Pay no attention, Dean. Next week, he's going to the insane asylum and give himself up. We were talking when you came in, and we were having a big discussion about sex. In front of him? Oh. Shame <laughs> on you. Dean. <laughs> it's all right. Compared to him, I'm a square. Compared to him, Frank Sinatra is a monk. <laughs> <laughs> More power to you, Dean. With you, it's wine, women, and song. I'd change places with you any time. You would? Yeah. Your liver, you can keep. <laughs> Back to our subject, Dean. Are you for sex education in schools? No, I've always preferred the car. <laughs> well, I don't know. A tip is a tip. <laughs> What's bad about 9%? <laughs> Jack, 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 we're not talking about tipping. We're talking about sex, S-E-X. Why do you keep talking about tipping? Because tipping, I can still do. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is sex, sex, sex. There's more to life. Why not get out, look at the oceans, look at the trees, look at the animals? Well, we're back to sex again. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll tell you, my own kid. With my own kid, I have to say this. Maybe if he took a course in sex education, I'm almost afraid, I think I would agree that it's a good idea. Almost afraid to say it. Don, why do you come with I'm almost afraid to say it? If you feel it, say it. Who cares what other people think? You can't go around today, not in this world, worrying about what other people think. You know something? You're absolutely right. I'm not gonna tip you at all. <laughs> oh. Nice looking pet you got there. It's a cow, isn't it? No, no, it's a horse that swallowed a rubber glove. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it a male or female? My age, it doesn't matter, believe me. <laughs> Say, your pet seems very well groomed. Do you bathe her often? Oh, no, just once or twice an hour. <laughs> Does she put up a fight when you bathe her? No, only when I try to dry her. <laughs> you know, I hear... Come back to you. You're supposed to like me. <laughs> I hear tigers are very vicious. Larry? Oh, yes. She'll attack at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Come on, Flossie. We better be going. See you around. Okay. Let's go make the decision. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have two models here now for that one. Uh -huh. Pardon me, but uh, you don't happen to have any extra eyeshadow, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sorry. You know, I never have any problem with shadows. <laughs> I wonder when she's gonna get off that phone and get to us. I don't know, but I wouldn't mind getting to her. Hey, hey. <laughs> I see you brought along your, your glossies, too. Yeah, but I think I'd better get uh, some new ones made. They're, they're too old. You think yours are old? I got a picture here that's so faded, I look like Governor Maddox. <laughs> I'll be with you gentlemen in a minute. In the meantime, you may take your clothes off in there. A nudie? She's putting us on. No, we're taking it off. <laughs> oh, naked for a national magazine? Well, now, I never expected this. Me either. I didn't even shave my legs this morning. <laughs> You're taking this pretty casual. Have you ever been photographed in the nude? Just once, and her husband got a fortune. I'll tell you. <laughs> the only time I was ever photographed in the nude, I was a baby. It was for a talcum powder ad. You must have had a beautiful face. My face had nothing, nothing to, to do, do with it. <laughs> oh, miss, on that centerfold, we, uh, we get a fig leaf, don't we? A 
Branch, maybe? Uh, how about a twig? Could I just have a few goose pimples? Look, a job's a job, so it's a... So it's a centerfold, you know. Yeah, but stark naked. What if my wife sees it? Well, if they put you on a dark rug and you keep your mouth shut, she won't notice you. Well, listen, I guess I'll take you. Ah, uh, me too. Miss, where do you say we take our clothes off? Where? In there. All right, well, come on, Twiggy. If we make good here, we might get hired to jump out of a cake. <laughs> well, it had better be a chocolate cake. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here he is, the guy who gets no respect, Rodney Dangerfield. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, I'm just thinking to myself before the show, you know, the audience over here, you make a guy feel great. You know, you're friendly. And over in my neighborhood, it's different, you know. Oh, I live, I live, you gotta watch yourself, I'll tell you the truth. I live in a tough neighborhood, tough, you know? Yeah, last week, a new guy moved in. He was showing off, he knew karate. He broke a brick with his hand. Then he broke his hand with a brick. <laughs> I tell you, my neighborhood, everybody's tough, you know? Even the people in business, they think tough. When there's a bank on my block, in his bank, if you open a savings account, they give you a free carving knife and point out two victims. <laughs> I don't know, I tell you, I can't figure people out. I can't figure my wife out. My wife. She don't give me no respect, you know? No respect at all. Every time I set the alarm, she turns it off. She says, well, I earn. It don't pay to get up. <laughs> I tell you, there's a lot of things in my wife I can't figure out, you know? The way she does the ironing. I mean, when you burn a shirt, who puts on butter? <laughs> You've been a great crowd. I'll see you again. I'll drop in. I'm always around. I'll... Oh, I'm great, great, great. Oh, by the way, Teddy, tonight, no drink. Skip the Shirley Temple, no Shirley Temple, no extra sugar, no nothing, you no know? No drink, Rodney, how come? Oh, I had my drink earlier, you know? Yeah, a guy was in earlier, I sat around, had a little conversation. A guy knew me from the old days. I worked nightclubs all over the country, you know? Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how many people know me from the old days. You know, they drop me from all over the country. And they always test my memory, you know? They always say, hey, Rodney, Boston, remember? Rodney, Chicago, remember? I never hear a woman say, Rodney, remember? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, in this club here, they all come in, you know? Everybody comes in here, yeah, you know? I, you know, I heard that Johnny Carson was in the other night. You heard about that? Yeah, he was. That guy's terrific, isn't he? Oh, oh gee, he's, ter he's great. He's fast. Isn't he? He, yeah, I was, I was talking to him, you know? He told me all about Nebraska. That's where he comes from, Nebraska, you know? And I tell you, I think a little Nebraska is still in him. Because the night Johnny Carson was here, that was the first night the doorman ever parked the tractor. <laughs> I tell you, Dean, this place, even all kinds of people. You know, at the bar, I heard two guys talk, you know? I heard one guy say, what do you think of Cambodia? The other guy said, if he's Italian, he's all right. You know, <laughs> you know when I worked at tough clubs years ago, I really met characters. Oh, I met characters. Well, Rodney, well, years ago, I worked some tough places myself, you know. You worked some tough places? Oh, I, well, I worked one place that was so tough, one night the boss said to me, kid, you want to go hunting? I said, OK, I'm game, and he shot me. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you, you meet characters all over the place, don't you, Dean? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, one of the toughest jobs I ever had, you know, I worked in Coney Island. I was a kid. I was middle of all the rides, you know? People going to Ferris wheel, they come in. One night, a couple came in from the whip. They came to see me. All night long, they laughed at me like this, you know? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, though, I, I, that's another place I never had any luck, Coney Island. I never got any respect there, either, you know? Remember when I was a kid, the first time my old man took me to Coney Island, we went to see the freaks, you know? The owner looked at me. He told my old man, get the kid out. He's distracting from the show. <laughs> You could do my entrance, but uh, who are they? These are my dinglings. They don't look like they have much ding left in them. 
Whatever they've got is plenty for me. <laughs> Girls, this is Dean Martin. Well, say something. Go ahead. They get confused, you know, when they're away from the home. <laughs> Jack, I still don't get it. Why didn't you use my ding -a -lings? Well, I was told that I couldn't. By my producer? No, by my doctor. Your doctor? <laughs> anyway, I would have had to use my girls out of loyalty. See, after all, they put up with a lot when they helped me entertain the troops. Okay. Yeah, it was cold at Valley Forge. <laughs> you can say that again, brother. Come here, Jack. I don't want them to hear us. What? I don't want them to hear us. They can't hear us, believe me. <laughs> well, maybe they can read lips. Now, look, Jack, these girls just aren't right. On my show, the people expect the more sex appeal. Well, what do you want from me? I paid for 20 pounds of silicone. <laughs> Look, I... <laughs> Look. Okay. Look, I've seen... It's hard for me to look. You know, I haven't seen you all week. I know. <laughs> look, I've seen, I've seen those ding -a lings of yours, and they're beautiful. But what do they do for you that mine can't do for me? If you folks will put the kitties to sleep, I'll tell them. <laughs> Never mind. Let's stop worrying. I know how those girls stand around you and sing to you and make a fuss over you. Well, believe me. My girls are just as crazy about me. Well, all right, Jack, let's find out. All right, let's, yes. Why this feeling? Why this glow? Why this thrill when you say hello? It's a strange That's me. Why the trembling oh, when you speak? Oh, why this joy when you touch my cheek? I must tell you what my heart knows is true. A Mr. Wonderful. That's me. We do this more often Just to what are we doing tonight Gee, but it's great to get together again Why does it only happen now and then? Oh, why, why don't, don't we do this more often? Darlings, I am growing old
That's our show for tonight. Before I go, I'd like to announce the results of our latest college poll. This week, we went to Oregon State University and asked the students the following question. Should a girl wear a padded bra? 27 said yes, 31 said no, and 18,000 said only if she's a lady umpire. <laughs>